So in this video, we're going to talk about how to add constraints to the bone crusher assembly so that the handle will move and you can drive the constraint and then subsequently uh, create an AVI file of the motion. So we can go ahead and get started with that now. So as you can see in the assembly, uh, I uh, have my handle in position, I've got my rack in position. If I went to grab the rack, things are not going to move. And the reason why this is uh, locked up this way is because I have an angle constraint set up. And that's the angle constraint that I'm using to drive uh, the motion of this assembly. So the angle constraint is then set up to say, okay, you're going to move from what would be a zero angle uh, vertically down and around to 180 degrees. So that's what's going on here. Now below, you can see that I have some other stuff set up here. Um, I'm driving adaptivity, uh, and I also have the AVI rate sped up a little bit so that it, it makes a little faster video, so it's not really kind of moving in a snail space. So, um, so I got that set up to run, and you can see it move back and forth. So how do I do this? Well, let's go ahead. I'm just going to then cancel out of this, and I'm going to go ahead and let's just delete the constraint. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to create the constraints. I'm going to grab the constraint tool and first go ahead and grab the angle constraint. And now I need to set up the angle uh, constraints. I'm going to then select the angle constraint. But what I really want to do is I want to have a unidirectional uh, constraint, something that I can then set up maximum and minimums. Notice if I'm over here uh, in a simple directed angle constraint, I don't have those max and min. So I want to be over here. Um, and then I have a max and a min that I can work with. So now I can go ahead and I can go ahead and tell it that as this thing, so here I'm talking center axis, uh, center axis of this handle right there that was highlighting right there. So center axis is going to be one angle constraint uh, or one angle that I'm working with. And then the second angle uh, is going to be based upon or the second line is going to be based upon another feature and then it's going to have an angle to that feature. So with the vertical angle selected, I need to find something else that is also uh, in that same vertical plane because then that's going to be based off of my angles from that point. So anything that's going to be in a vertical plane, this line up and down on this rack, I could use the center axis of um, the shaft, anything that is vertical. So I'll go ahead and select the axis of that rack because they're both going up and down. And then my angles will be based off of that. So now I come over here to my constraints and I'm going to say I want to use uh, use angle as rest position. And we'll go ahead and say the minimum is going to be set to zero. And my max, let's go all the way down, a full rotation down with the handle 180. And then we'll hit apply. So I'm going to hit cancel. And now I come over here, right click and hit drive. And then what that's going to do is allow me to drive this. Oh, stop touching it. Drive the handle down and then we'll then drive it back up. So we got the drive set up and it's working correctly. Now we just need to go ahead and export the AVI. So to go about exporting the AVI, I always like to open up this additional information here. And I want to go down here. You can hit drive adaptivity. And then we can also set up the AVI rate. I think I set this up to be 35. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run this. And you can see how this is all functioning and running back and forth. We'll go run back the other direction. And it's going to run just fine. Okay, so now minimize dialogue during recording. So what this means is this whole thing here will disappear. So I'm going to select the record button. I'm going to tell it where I want to hide this, or I should say not hide it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to put here WMV files. I don't want that. I want an AVI file, all right? And I'm going to go ahead and name this um, Bone Crush, and I'll call this 3 just because I have some things in here. Uh, save it out and full frames uncompressed. We're going to leave that the way it is. Hit OK. And then when we hit uh, go, everything is recording at that point. So anything you do on your screen, if you zoom in, if you zoom out, if you pan, anything that happens is going to get recorded. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just zoom in just to get a nice close up of that gear, how that gear is moving. And then I'll show you what's going to happen there. OK. So it really does look like it's creeping along at a snail's pace too. And then we'll go ahead and we'll run it backwards. It's running back, it's running back, it's running back. All the way up. 
There it is. Now we can go ahead and we can take a look at the actual file. So I went and I found where I saved Bone Crush 3. There's the name of it. I'm going to hit play and you'll see that I zoomed out, zoomed in. And even though it looked like it was moving at a snail's pace, in the AVI file, it's moving along quite nicely. It has a nice smooth flow to it. So um, all in all, this worked out pretty well. You get to see the gear movement um, and it looks nice. So this is uh, hopefully a quick down and dirty uh, on how to get your bone crusher handle uh, to move and be driven as a drive constraint. Don't forget to hit save when you guys finish up. All right, hope this helps you out.